Okay. Two objects are thrown from the top of a building. One is thrown up and the other is thrown down, both with the initial speed. Same initial speed. What are their speeds when they hit the street? That's the question. The question is very clear, isn't it? All right. Thrown from the top of a building. Let me clear this. So you have a building there. One object is thrown straight up, so it goes like that, comes down. The other object is thrown straight down. And it says both are given the same initial speed. Let's say V naught. Now object A, when it reaches here, what's the speed? What's the velocity at the highest point? Zero. Zero. Okay. Now it's going to speed up. When it comes back down, what do you think the speed is going to be exactly when it passes the top of the building on the way down? It's going to be exactly V naught. If you threw it at 30 meter per second, it's going to slow down, become zero, and then when it passes the top of the building, it's going to go down at 30 meter per second. And which is the same speed at which this was thrown down, isn't it? So that was an easy one. So what's the answer? What should the answer be? Both hit the ground at the same time. Now, if you did not get that, you did not get the physics. That's the truth, but we have to step it up. It's not about substituting into equations and calculating. So you have to get that. All right? Do you, does anybody have a question on that one? Clear. Very good. Yes. I was just thinking because if it was higher, it would have more time to speed up than the other object. No. My explanation was very clear. What? Do you agree that on the way down, when it passes the top of the building, it will be going down with the same speed that you threw it up? Do you agree with that? Then, both of these are exactly the same. We're not talking about time. Well, which one will take more time to hit the ground? Definitely. A or B, which will take more time to hit the ground? The one thrown up. The one thrown up. A will take more time. Certainly, we're not talking about the time. We're talking about the speed at which they hit the ground. Let's go slowly. Let us be clear. Okay? Second one. If the position versus time graph of an object is a vertical line, position versus time. So you take time on the x-axis. Position is x, right, on the y-axis. And it says it's a vertical line. So it's a line like this, kind of. Should be perfectly vertical, OK. What is the slope of that line? How much is the slope of this line? Say it. Undefined. It's infinite. That's the slope of the line. It's infinite. Now the question says, it's a vertical line. The object is, one of the choices, I cannot see all the choices. I can only see your answers. One choice is, it's at rest. Is this at rest? No. <laughs> is this at rest? No. No. I mean, X is shooting up, right? It's not at rest. Another one says, none of the above, which is wrong. Moving with constant non-zero speed. If it, was more, if it was a line like this, what would you say about the speed? Let me sketch it all the way from here. What is this object doing? Constant. So that's zero, one, two, three meters, OK? So from, from a certain point, it's at 3 meters when you start. After one second, it's still at 3 meters. After two seconds, it's still at 3 meters. So it's not moving. So if that was the graph, the object was not moving. Agree? Now try to look at this. This is crazy because it's like time is not changing. Do you see that? Time is not changing, but the position is changing. Is that possible? No. This is possible. Is this possible? Yes. That would be an object moving at constant speed, because the slope would give you the speed. See? Because the slope would be dx by dt, isn't it? So velocity is the slope. That's right. So I've given you three graphs now. Let's talk about it one more time. A, B, and C. Okay, what about A again? What kind of object does it represent? What kind of object is this? At rest. At rest, not moving. Okay. What about B? 
moving at a constant speed. And how do you get the speed? By taking the slope, because velocity is dx by dt. Right? What about c? Nothing. So there was one answer to that effect, said moving with infinite speed, correct? That is the answer. Infinite speed. I mean, zero time is just flying. So that was a tough. Tell me something. Four, five, six people got it right. Two objects. This is question number three. Two objects are dropped from a bridge, an interval of one second apart. It's very clear. So first one is dropped, and then after one second, the other one is dropped. Okay. During the time that both objects continue to fall, their separation. So the first object goes down. Now somebody tell me, what's the displacement of a freely falling object in one second? How did you get that? Because we use this formula, v naught t plus one half a t squared, right? If you put, what's v naught? If you don't participate, you know, you don't talk, it's going to be a problem. What is v naught? Zero. So that whole term is gone, and t is one. A is nine point eight, isn't it? So you have four point nine meters, right? So in one second, any freely falling object will move four point nine meters respective of its mass. All right. What about in two seconds? In two seconds. Use the same form. Just make t 2. This will become 0 again. 2 squared is 4. 4 and 2. That's 2 times 9.8. Come on. 19.6 meters. That's the total displacement in two seconds. Isn't it? And so on and so forth. Let's try one more. What about in three seconds? Three squared is nine. Nine times nine point eight by two gives you forty-four point one. Check it out. I have no space to draw it here. You know why? It goes all the way down somewhere here. So, anyways, it's in the third second or in three seconds. It's going to be forty-four point one meters. I'm going to use this to teach you something extra. Somebody tell me, what's the displacement in the second second? How much did it move? We know in the first second it moved 4.9. How much did it move just in the second second? No. That was the total displacement in two seconds. Yeah, 19.6 minus 4.9 is how much it moved in the second second, right? All right. How much did it move in the third second? You can look at me if you want to, or use your calculator. I mean, you can do it. 24.4. 24. So you took 44.1 minus 19.6. Is that what you did? Now, do you see that as the seconds elapse? It's traveling more and more. Did you notice that? In the first second, it only moved 4.9. In the next second, it moved, what, 14.7. And in the third second, how much was it? 24.4. 24.4. Did you notice that? So now, when you drop the next object one second later, can you give me the answer with this picture now, with this explanation? Can you tell me? Yes. I have a no, no, give me the answer first, then we'll go to the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The question is, what's happening to the, the distance between these two objects as each second passes? It's increasing. It's accelerating. It's in constant. Alright, the first object was dropped. After one second it moved 4.9 meters, right? And then the second started. So what's the distance between them right now? After one second. Already it's 4.9 meters ahead, isn't it? Yes. Alright, after two seconds, the second one has moved 19.6. How much has the first one moved? 4.9. So what's the distance between them? 14.7. Isn't it? Yes. Why should I try so hard? Anyway, <laughs> after another second, isn't the distance between them 24.4? Right? Yes. Whatever it was. Now do you see that the distance between them was increasing? Yes. 
Okay, how many understood that? Put your hand up. Thanks. Please, go ahead with your question. At what point does air resistance... We never consider air resistance. As much as we are concerned, as far as we are concerned, we are dead. There's no air, no, no oxygen. Okay. See, I, <laughs> I thought it would hit terminal velocity and vibration. See, for an object, look, two objects are dropped from a bridge. For an object, this object to hit terminal velocity will have to move for such a long time because it's really small. Unless you imagine the object to be huge and light, you know. Or if you imagine that the object is a raindrop. Those are special cases. Or if you're skydiving. You're falling from where above? This is from a bridge. Didn't it say a bridge? Yeah, I just didn't How know. high is a bridge? Which is the biggest bridge you've seen? Let's fight. I, I didn't know. I didn't know how big <laughs> Don't feel bad, this is what I am. But you understand, a bridge is, what's the, I don't know, which is the biggest bridge you've seen. Is it more than 500 meters? 1,000 meters? It will not attain terminal velocity within that. So that's why I said there is a bridge. Good question, though. But you have to read it a little bit more. Okay, number four. The slope of a line connecting two points on a velocity time graph. Okay, now it's a velocity time graph. Even before I explain it, somebody give me the answer. It's a velocity time graph now. Time and velocity, isn't it? And let's say that the line is like that. What does the slope give you? Everybody knows that the slope is dy by dx, don't you? And what is this? That's a change in velocity. And what is this? Time. Change in time. And what do you mean by change in velocity by change in time? Now that is sad. If you cannot tell me what change in velocity divided by time is, that is sad. And I'm going to go mad now. Acceleration. 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 You learn the calculus, please, first. Velocity is dx by dt. Acceleration is dv by dt. Isn't it? That's when you put it as a derivative there. But uh, represent it as an integral, definitely dx is equal to d dt. Just to rearrange. So if you integrate, you're going to get total displacement is equal to integral dt. Make sense? Okay, same thing here. Rearrange this, a times dt. And integrate both sides, you're going to get the change in velocity, actually that is change in velocity, not just velocity, understand, is equal to integral a dt. You need to write this down, you need, that's where we're going to next. We have to use calculus. But first I thought we have to get the concepts before we get into calculus. So the answer to this question is, it gives you the average acceleration. Why average acceleration? Look, are you looking at one particular time or are you considering two instants? Look at that. Isn't that one particular time, maybe two seconds, and this is like four seconds, isn't it? Come on. Aren't you taking both two seconds and four seconds? Therefore, what you get is not the instantaneous acceleration, but the average acceleration. You got it? So that was not so tough. So be ready. Try to understand. Try to get it. Even if you got all wrong, does not mean that you are not capable. Only means you have to step up. All right? Right? Be happy, just smile. This is physics. It's different. I told you on day one, just because you're good in calculus does not mean you would be good in physics. You have a better chance, okay? So let's test out this calculus. I just want to continue this way and use some calculus today. All right, let's get there. I'm going to give you a function, and I want you to try to get something out of it. Unless you have a question. Don't want to appear to be going fast. 
really I want to go as slow as possible so you don't give that as an excuse. Okay. Okay, this is the function that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the velocity as a function of time. Okay, you can get, write down, write that down and try. Okay. Velocity as a function of time is 4t plus 6t squared. Find a, find its displacement. B, find its average acceleration between one second and two seconds. And C, find its acceleration at t is equal to two seconds. So you have three questions and they this is really important to know how to get it. I've already given you an idea of how to get the displacement from velocity. It's right here before you. Don't you see that? It's here. So what do you have to do to get displacement from velocity? What do you have to do? Integrate it with respect to time, right? So if you can go ahead of me, go ahead. If you integrate that, what would you get? You would get 4t squared by 2, come on, plus, what's the second term? 6t cubed by 3. Isn't yeah, 6 by 3 will be 2. Yeah, of course. Okay. So that is what I've written. Velocity is dx by dt, so dx is v dt, and you get x is as the integral of the same thing that I've written there. So this time, velocity is 40 plus 60 squared. Integrate that. When you integrate, you get 40 squared by 2 plus 60 cubed by 3 plus c. But you always know there's a constant of integration, isn't it? What do you mean by the constant of integration? In math, you're happy uh, if you just put a c there. But we cannot do that here. What's the practical implication of a constant of integration, anybody? What do you mean by constant of integration? What? It's like a family of functions. They're all the same, but they're different places. Uh huh. That's right. On the y intercept, you could take that as a y intercept. But in physics, understand that it shows a boundary condition. Now, what do you mean by a boundary condition? There are two boundary conditions. One is the beginning, the other is the ending. You know what I mean by boundaries. Now, which is the boundary condition that we've been talking about through this chapter? We've been talking about initial velocity. Isn't that a boundary condition? Okay, at that point, what is t? At the boundary condition, at the initial velocity, what is the time? Zero. Thanks. So to get the value of the constant of integration, you'll have to put t is equal to zero. Finally, that's what it means. And whenever you do that, whatever velocity you get would be the initial velocity, okay? All right, so let's continue with this and see. So simplifying, you get 2t squared plus 2t cubed plus c. And I just added something. I said, that question is not complete unless I say, find its displacement at t is equal to 2 seconds. Please add that. Find its displacement at t is equal to 2 seconds. Did you notice that I added that just now? Mm -hmm. Now, since you have x, what do you have to do to find the displacement at 2 seconds? All you got to do is substitute t as? Two, go ahead, do that, and get the answer. So first you integrate, and then whatever the time is, just substitute and see what you get.
at t is equal to 2 seconds, you get 2t squared plus. Wasn't that the function? Okay. And then I told you about the boundary condition. If at t equal to 0, x is equal to 0. That means we are measuring from a certain point, right? So you can put that back, and then you would get c is equal to 0. Hold on, let me explain that. Maybe somebody did not understand. Look at this equation. If you put t is equal to 0 in this, and x is 0, aren't you going to get c is equal to 0? Aren't you going to get c is equal to 0 from there? OK. In that one, if you put t is equal to 0 and x is 0, then c is 0. So x is 24 meter. You got that? How to find the displacement? OK. Now what was the second part? The B part was its average acceleration between one second and two seconds. Didn't I tell you? Average acceleration is the slope, isn't it? And how do you find the slope? It's dV by dx. So you got to now substitute t is equal to two seconds, I mean one second, get the velocity at that point, then substitute t is equal to two seconds, get the velocity at that point, take the difference, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, that comes up over again. Don't wait for me. You have to go ahead of me. This is like a race of seeing who will copy faster. So that was the function given. Just put t is equal to one second in that, find the velocity. Get 10 meter per second. Do the same for two seconds. So that's the velocity at 2 seconds. It's 32 meter per second. And acceleration is the difference. As you can see, the difference between the two. Here, difference between the two divided by the time. Change in velocity divided by the change in time. So I get 22 meter per second squared. That was the average acceleration. So if you're asked to find the average acceleration, you do not differentiate, you do not take the derivative, you just <coughs> substitute the times given, take the difference when you're asked to find the average acceleration, okay? Keep that in mind. I know I did not ask you to do that, but just in case, if, I, if I'd asked you to find the instantaneous acceleration at three seconds, would you do it, please? If I'd asked you to find the instantaneous <coughs> acceleration at three seconds, what would you do? Just tell me what you would do. Go ahead. So you, yes, you would take dv by dt, isn't it? You would get something. Come, let's do it. It's, it's what would you, yeah, what, what was the function? It's 4t plus 6t squared, isn't it? Yes. If I had asked you to find the instant in its acceleration, it's dv by dt. That's why when you study calculus, you begin the saying delta t tends to zero. Do you remember that? Limit delta t tends to zero. <coughs> Limit delta x tends to zero. You know what that means? That means you're taking the smallest time interval. That means you're talking about a particular instant. That's what it means. Okay. So, what do you get? 4 plus 12t. Now, if you're struggling with that, I'm really sorry. 
do something before it's too late. Okay, and then what did I say at t is equal to? Three seconds did I say? So at t is equal to three seconds. Now what you got to do is a is four plus 12 times three, which is 40 meter per second squared. Do you see that the instantaneous acceleration is different from the average acceleration that we got? Because acceleration is now a function of time. Let me ask you one question here. Might be a very silly question. Are we talking about an object that has a constant acceleration? No. We're talking about an object that has an acceleration that depends on time. But in all of our equations, we have a constant acceleration, remember that. So this is a case of when you're shooting a rocket up, trying to send it into space. Do you think it'll have a constant acceleration? No. No. What'll happen to its acceleration? Assuming that it's firing off at the same rate, you know, the burnt gases are coming out at the same rate, what's happening to its mass as it goes up? Changing. How changing? Increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. If the mass is decreasing, what will happen to the acceleration? For the same force. It will increase. Come on, can I hear that? It will increase. So, none of our equations will work unless we use calculus. That's why I had to tell you this. I hope that's clear. Our equations that we had will not work in the case of a rocket. That's where we need calculus. Uh, we're not going to go too much into it, but I hope you understand. That's a case of changing acceleration. Okay, let's finish off. What was the third part? Acceleration at t2. Oh, it was the same thing? Acceleration at t is equal to what, two seconds? Yes. Oh, well, so I did it. I already did it. I just said at three and I, okay. So I'm going to be quiet, at least for some time. I'm already tired. I have to stay up to 2.45. What makes me tired is the grade that you Okay. Let's consider that there are two objects at the top of that building. Two objects, A and B. Their masses don't matter. B is going to be projected horizontally at 20 meter per second. Perfectly horizontal, okay? Not up, not down, perfectly horizontal. At the same time, A is going to be dropped. Now let's say that the height of the building is 78.4 meter. So A is dropped B is at the same time projected at 20 meter per second. So B is going to go that way and hit somewhere here. And A is going to come down and hit somewhere here. OK, that's the ground. Which one hits the ground first? Every question deserves an answer. Don't you think so? OK, which one hits the ground first, A or B? And if you are scared of opening your mouth because you go wrong, you will never it. answer. Everybody makes a mistake. Same time. See, that makes me happy. At least a few said, same time. Now, as, a, as an instructor, that's what I expect. Put yourself in my shoes. I ask questions and nobody answers. How will I feel? <laughs> <laughs> ask questions and I have to give the answer. You can go wrong, it's okay. Because this is not a, you know, X-class stuff. Surely both will hit the ground at the same time. Now why? Can you give a reason for that? Let's talk about this object B. Uh, I mean A. It's moving along one dimension. It's only moving along the Y-axis, isn't it? No motion along the X-axis. But B is moving both along the X and the y-axis. But when you look at A and B, what's the vertical displacement of A as compared to the vertical displacement of B? 
It's shorter distance. I'm showing it with my dirty hands. This is the vertical displacement of A. That is the vertical displacement of B. Uh, equal. Okay. Because if both started from the same height and both reached the ground, aren't their vertical displacements the same? Yes. yes. Okay? B has a horizontal displacement, yes. But that doesn't change anything to do with the vertical. So, if you only look at the vertical motion, <coughs> if you understand that, this, you understand entire chapter 3. If you look at the vertical motion of both, give me the quantities that you know. What's the... See, now we have to write V-O-Y. Means the y-axis. Is that initial velocity along the y-axis? For both A and B is how much? Zero. Thanks. Both A and B. Both do not have an initial velocity along the vertical. I know some people are looking at 20. That's the initial velocity along the horizontal. I don't care about that right now. I'm only talking about vertical. Okay, what's A? For both A and B, A is 9.8 meter per second squared, and we do not know how much time it will take for both. Uh, the vertical displacement is 78.4 meter. So you know the term, uh, the equation that you have to use is V naught T plus one half A T squared. Please put it into that. What do you get for time? Let's find the time actually. This term becomes zero there, and this is 4.9 T squared. I give you a good number. That's what I'm thinking. Do you get four seconds? Check it out. Because when you divide 78.4 by 4.9, do you get 16? What I'll do is I'll bring a big calculator, hang it on my neck. Yes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> what else can I do? Do you get 16? Yes. So square root of 16 is four seconds. T is equal to four seconds. Yeah, I know plus or minus four, but time can never be negative. So it's four seconds. So both will take four seconds to hit the ground, isn't it? Let's see your hands if you understood. Uh, okay, thanks. Now tell me one thing. Can anybody calculate delta x for b? If you can, just do it, tell me the answer. Because there is a delta x for b, isn't it? Just do it. Now you think about it. Hey, what equation do we use? Huh? What do you know about 20 meter per second? It's never going to change because it's horizontal all the way until it hits the ground. It's going to stay at 20 <coughs> meter per second. Gravity has nothing to do with a horizontal component. If you could write that in golden letters, oh, that would be so good. Gravity does not affect the horizontal component. It only affects the vertical component. So you've got to see these two different now. X and Y do not affect each other. They are independent. Okay. So the velocity is a constant. And if the velocity is a constant, there's only one equation that will work. What's that equation? That's it. Oh, if the velocity is constant, then this is the only equation that will work. So that's 20 meters per second multiplied by 4 seconds, and 80 meters. Now that's important for a pilot to know when he's in the battlefield, when he's trying to drop a bomb. Don't you think so? Yes. An aircraft are flying much faster than 20 meter per second, maybe 200 meter per second. Now, if that guy has no idea of it, any physics, he's going to kill a lot of civilians on that day. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll say, oh, well, let me drop a bomb here, and he's right over that. Nobody does that. I'm just, you know. I'm moving at 200 meter per second. If it takes four seconds, it's going to move 800 meter. Did you get that? Yes. So that means he has to drop the bomb 200, I mean 800 meters before hitting the spot.
Any questions on this? Perfect? Okay. So let's change the angle a little bit. Right now it's 20, isn't it? Yeah, you, did you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm good. I'm trying to speak, say everything so you don't have a question. Let's change the situation a little bit. Let's say that an object is thrown up from the ground now at 15 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees, 15 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. I want you to sketch the diagram completely, I mean make the picture, complete it, show where it hits the ground, and I want you to find the time it takes, the time it takes to hit the ground, and how far away it falls. You can do those two first. Complete the picture. Of course, you would have drawn something like that, right? Now, what kind of a geometrical figure is this? It's not a hemisphere. A hemisphere is three dimensional. This is just semicircle. It's not a semicircle. It appears to be, it's not a semicircle. Parabola. Thank you. Uh, Don't worry, we'll prove it. We'll prove it using math. Okay. Oh, I believe it's a parabola. I just wasn't thinking in my mind frame just now. We'll get it. Don't worry. So we got to f first find the time that it takes to go from A to B. The first thing you do is this. I'm drawing it, I'm drawing it again here, just that far, 15 meter per second. Isn't this a vector? How do you know it's a vector? Because it has a size, a magnitude, and ha has a direction. So it's a vector. Any vector can be resolved into two components, the horizontal component and the vertical component. So. This is the vector, 15 meter per second is the magnitude of the vector at 30 degrees. And you can get the two components by using the right angle triangle here. If you simply look at the right angle triangle, first of all, you, do you realize that BC is the same as this guy? Mm -hmm. Same thing? Okay. Look at this right angle triangle and can you make out that AC is the adjacent side? Oh, yes. If AC is the adjacent side, it's going to become 15 cos 30. And BC is the opposite side, so it's going to become 15 sine 30. So whenever you have a velocity, the first thing you have to do is break it up into its components. You have the horizontal as cos and the vertical as sine. Okay, so how much is this? Somebody give me the, right, this is 7.5. Yeah. For sine 30 is 0.5. But I need your help on this, 0.86, 12, 12, 12, how much? 12. Yeah. 12.99? Yeah, oh, okay, so we'll take it at 13.9. Just want to see the time on the map. 13 meters per second, approximately. 
Okay? Yes? Can you calculate that? The factor has to be in degrees, right? Yes, it has to be because we put I just said 30 that degrees. Yeah. Got it correct. Has to be in degrees because you put it in degrees. Good question, Dave. Because most of the value will it'll be in radians. Because you said the uh, unit of angle is radian. Yeah. Okay. Now help me out. We got to find the time. Which one of these two components should we use to find the time? The horizontal or the vertical? Horizontal. The vertical. Earth. To find the time. Okay. So what's your initial velocity? Oh, not your. What's the initial velocity of the object? Along the vertical. Zero. Speak up, please. Zero. Oh, goodness, you threw it up at 15. And you've broken it up into two components, so there's no more 15 for you. See? Zero. 15 Zero. is now represented by these two, and I'm asking you which one I should use. I'm going to hit my head here and die. Come on now. Zero. 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 Goodness. <laughs> now, that's just to make you laugh, you know, because some faces are like, is this what I signed up for? <laughs> Come on. Okay. Is it first going up or is it going down? Uh, going up. Uh, Therefore, A should be positive or negative. It's first going up. See that? So what's happening to it first? It is slowing down. So it must be... Right? We're trying to find... Oh, maybe. Do you remember what you're trying to find? So Usually when you tell all these stories, by this time you've forgotten what you're trying to find. <laughs> okay, what else do you know? Because all of the equations have four terms, right? We only have three. Can anybody tell me what's the fourth term? Remember, we're talking about the vertical only. Here it is. The picture is right here before you. And to save time, I'll ask you this. Who knows? What is the vertical displacement of this object? What is the vertical displacement of this object? It started from the ground and finished back on the ground. What is its vertical displacement? How much did it move vertically? Zero. Thank you. Now, some students, it's so, so tough for them to see it. They'll see A and B. Okay. That's along the horizontal. If it started from the ground and ended up on the table, well, then it did have a vertical displacement equal to the height of the table. Right? That didn't happen here. It started from the ground, finished back on the ground, therefore delta y is 0. Now, what is the equation you would use? Whatever is the equation, use that and find the time. And I'm going to be quiet for you. And then when you rearrange, you are surely going to get that this will go, that will go, so it will be 7.5 over 4.9. Is that what you say? Mm -hmm. Then mine is right, yours is wrong. I, I, just I don't want to use <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is right, you're wrong. That's why I said use your own method. If we get the same answer, you're right. But I know I'm right. Not because I'm always right, but this time I'm right. Okay, how much did you get? 1.5? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, 1.53. 1.53, okay. If you got that, fine. It's your own method. No fight. 1.53 seconds? All right. So we found the time. Second thing. Who can find the horizontal displacement? I mean, can you find delta x? Go find it, find it, just find it. Give me the answer. It's uh, just south of 20. Huh? It's just below 20, so I'm around it. Uh -uh, I don't want around it, I want the answer. Okay. Just around use this equation. <laughs> Isn't this the equation that we use? Right? Mm -hmm. Come on. But technically, this should be V O X. Right? What's V O X? 13. Therefore, it's 13 meter per second times 1.53 seconds. How much do you get for that? 19. Is that what you were saying? How much is that? 
Okay, 19.9, that's why he was saying 20. Okay, 20 meter, approximately 20 meter. So to find the horizontal displacement, you use the horizontal component. And it never changes, therefore the equation is just multiply that with the time. Must be clear. Now the last thing that we got to do is, well not the last, but the third one. Find the maximum height of this object. <coughs> Isn't this the maximum height? That went, let's call it delta y. And please use your intelligence and tell me how to find the maximum height. But don't you think that it'll take half the time to reach there? Mm -hmm. You can do it that way if you want to, because we already got the time as 1.53. If you take half of that, you will get the time to reach here. I mean, you can do it in several ways. Do it. And tell me the maximum height. Now, the thing is, we are not concerned about CB. We are only concerned about AC, isn't it? So let's start over again. Which component should we use, horizontal or vertical? We're trying to find a vertical height, isn't it? So it'll be really silly if you use the horizontal. Okay, therefore, the OY, how much is that? 7.5 meter per second, okay. Acceleration is negative 9.8, because first it's going up. Did you say we know the time? You say we know the time? Okay. Uh, how much is the time? Half of that, which is 0. 0.7? 7, 7, 6. Let's, okay, 7, 6, 5, I know, but let's take it as 0. 0.76 seconds, or 7, 7, in, in a perfect world. Yeah. And then, what are we looking for? Delta 1. Okay, we have a problem. What equation could you use if you're going that way? What's the equation that has those four terms? That's the equation that we've spoken of about 25 times since the beginning of this class, and I called it the king. Okay, use that. What do you get? Plug it into that, you will get 7.5 times 0 0.77 plus 1 half times 9.8 is, but it's negative, so minus 4.9 and point, oh, just tell me all that, do all that and give me the answer. What do you get? Two point eight seven. Me. Can a second person, can you second that? Somebody, just to make yes, sure that, yes. okay. Yes. So that's the maximum height. So we found out three things. The time, the total time, the horizontal displacement, and the maximum height. Must be very clear. Now we're going to do a fourth one. I think I can remember four, five, six things that I could make you calculate from this. Number four, find the velocity of the object. Find velocity at one second, or after one second. <clears throat> this object took 1.53 seconds to to reach B, didn't it? So where would it be after one second? One second after projection, where would it be? Would it be before C or after C? What a silly thing. After C. So it would be somewhere here. Right? What do you know about this component at that point? I'm going to do that one day. I mean, what do you know about this component? What do you know about this component? It's constant. At? Thanks. Thank you. 
the horizontal never changes. I've told you that three times now. One more time. <laughs> the horizontal component never changes throughout the motion. It's 13. Okay, so that's settled. Do we know? Hey, at this point, what's the vertical component? At the maximum height, what is the vertical component of the velocity? At the maximum height. Thanks. Come on. But, hey, come on. You're getting better as each minute passes. <laughs> See what's happening to the vertical component? Okay. And after that, what happens to the vertical? Increases. So at this point, it's something like, I don't know, maybe this. It cannot be more than 7.5 because that's the maximum it'll have just before it hits the ground. See? Okay. So it's something. I don't know. Can you find that thing? Help me find that, because if you get that and you know this, you can find the total of the two, okay? Find that. Now let's start with what do we know? Let me take all this out so you don't get confused. Okay. What do we know? Do we know the initial vertical? No? Come on. We know that? Did I give you the time? Okay. I said find the velocity of the one second. We're looking for the final velocity along the y. Final velocity along the y at one second. So that's what you're looking for. And you also know that A is negative because you're only interested in what happened at the beginning. Yes. What's the equation? A equal to this one. Yeah. By T. Yes. V I of V. Doesn't matter. It's just the initial. Okay. So that's equal to? Negative 9.8 is equal to, we do not know this, minus, that is 7.5 divided by, what is that? 1. I give you 1 so we have, I mean, it's a little easier. So what is V and Y? Minus 9.8 plus 7.5, which would be negative 2.3, isn't it? Wait, why is it negative? Because it's, it's going down. Because didn't we take the up direction as positive? And when you get a negative, that means it's going down. Perfect. So we got our two components now. That's the vertical after one second. What's the horizontal after one second? Oh, now you forgot that. What's the horizontal component after one second? 13. Okay. 13. I think in my past life I was teaching in the kindergarten. I don't know, maybe, because I like to hear voices. <laughs> maybe I'm not fit for university teaching, where everybody acts spooky, all the students. And I know why, because they're thinking about something else, <laughs> not about the class itself. <laughs> We've got to step it up. We've got to step it up. Okay. <coughs> Once you get these two, how do you combine them? Do you just add them up? Okay, let me draw it again. I, I can't, because I'm recording all this, I don't want to use the other side of the board. Okay. All right. So we got two components. We got this as 13, and then we got this. Oh, no, actually this. <coughs> Why am I drawing it down? Because it's down. Uh, it's how much? Not drawn to scale, 2.3. I'm not writing the minus because I've already drawn it down. Okay, so 13 and 2.3. How do you find the the sum of two vectors? Do you simply add them up? Yes, that's where you use this. A, B, C. And you get, that's where you get A, C, isn't it? How do you get A, C? Come on. 
a c squared is a b squared plus b c squared. So that would be 13 squared plus b c. Now you, you realize that even if it was negative, it'll turn into a positive, see? When you take the square of that, so it doesn't matter. So tell me this, please. a c, what is a c? Just put those numbers. How much? 13.2? Okay. 13.2, yeah, this contributes just a little bit. Meter per second. And I, next I want you to find out the angle at which the velocity is. Can we just find this angle? Yes. How would you get that angle? Now, you see, now you got all of the three. You can either use sine, cos, or tan, whatever you like. But let's go for sine. Sine theta is the opposite side by this. So 2.3 divided by 13.2. Find that out. Get me the angle. Theta is equal to first divide those and then take the sine inverse of that. And you would get the angle. As it's going to be a small angle, don't be worried. How much? I have two answers. 10.03. Ten, ten okay, approximately 10 degrees, and that sounds right. That's the angle with the horizontal, isn't it? With the horizontal, you'll have to specify that. Because now the object is going down like this. What's going to happen to the angle as it keeps going? Will it increase or decrease? Think about it. It's going to increase. It's going to increase. Okay, what's the angle at the highest point? Zero. I'm showing it. Zero. <laughs> it's zero. Because there's no vertical component. You're going to get a zero here, isn't it? Zero divided by anything is zero. And sine zero is zero. Why am I saying all this? I don't know. Anyway, did you get it? Now, projectile motion is really important. Because you know what the athletes are trying to do, day in and day out, in hammer throw, javelin throw, discus throw. In all these athletic events, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to get maximum height, or are they trying to get the maximum horizontal displacement? Maximum horizontal displacement. OK, so one or two questions now. What should they do to get maximum horizontal displacement? Number one. Doesn't it depend on the initial velocity that they can give it? So they have to give it a maximum initial velocity. Number two, if I ask you this question, almost everybody will answer it. At what angle should they throw it to get maximum horizontal displacement? Almost everybody knows, but then my next question, almost nobody knows. Okay, at what angle should they throw it? 45 degrees. Okay, very good. It's not just Matthew you knew that. Almost all of you knew that. You didn't? All right, let's say somebody throws it at 90 degrees. That's the last time we'll throw it. <laughs> because delta x is going to be zero, isn't it? Okay, let's say he throws it at zero degrees. Oh. <laughs> okay, now prove to me. That's my second question. Prove to me, using the math, that to get maximum delta x, the angle should be 45 degrees. That's your next question, write it. Prove that the angle for maximum horizontal distance is 45 degrees. Prove that. The angle for maximum horizontal displacement is 45 degrees, prove it.
but quickly because you'll take time. I know. Do you understand what I've written now? I know we worked out a problem with numbers, isn't it? I gave you the initial velocity as, I can't remember, 20, 15, and then we worked it out. But if we do not have numbers, wouldn't this be what you write? Initial velocity along the vertical is V O Y, A is minus G, T is T, delta Y is zero. That's very important. Total vertical. And if you put that into that equation, and don't be copying this, please, because I'm going to go fast. One half A T squared. If you plug it into that and rearrange, this is. Do you do you remember that this was V naught? Sine theta. Anybody remembers that? The vertical was sine and the horizontal was cos. So if you plug all that into this v naught sine theta multiplied by time minus one half gt. See, I cannot write faster than that. That's why. And then half gt squared is equal to v naught sine theta multiplied by t. Cancel that and rearrange. You would get two v naught sine theta by g. I'm giving you a ready-made formula to find the time. But this only works if the object goes from ground to ground. Why? Because what did we assume? So be careful. So now you can write down just that one, and I've just shown you how we get it. Okay? The time two v not sine theta by g. Again, it only works if the object goes from ground to ground. In the same way. Now, to find delta x, because the question was about getting maximum along the horizontal, isn't it? I'm coming to that. So, how do you find this? Wouldn't it be v naught cos theta, that's the horizontal component, multiplied by t, right? Is that what we did? And t is already this, so that's v naught cos theta multipli multiplied by 2 v naught sine theta by g which is v naught squared, 2 sine theta, cos theta by g. Does anybody remember a trig formula that could simplify this? Sine? sine. Very good. Oh. Thank you, my professor. We'll talk to you. That is sine 2 theta. Therefore, we go, OK, v naught squared, sine. I'm writing that 2 as big as possible because some people think putting a two there and putting it or putting it on top is the same. No, it's not. One is the power. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Divide by G. That's another ready-made formula for finding delta X, which will only work if it goes from ground to ground. Again. Now wasn't our question about this? Now help me out. Now here comes the physics part. Can anybody change G? I wish they could. No. So that's a constant. And we already talked about the initial velocity. We said they have to try to give it the maximum possible. Didn't we say that? OK. So that's fixed. Now if that's, those two are fixed, and you want a maximum for this, what do you say about this quantity? Should that be a maximum or a minimum? What a silly question. It's in the numerator. So would you make it as big as possible or as small as possible to get this? I look silly. Come on. But yet there's no answer. You want this to be maximum. What would you do to this term? Biggest possible. What's the maximum value of any sine function? One. Thank you. So when would this become one? So that means sine 2 theta is one. When does the value of sine become one? What's the angle? In degrees, please. 90. 90 degrees. So 2 theta is 90 degrees. Because that's your angle. Your theta is 45 degrees. That's how you prove that the angle for maximum horizontal distance is 45 degrees. It's not tough. No, it's not tough. Just made use of the math. Any questions on that? The last thing that's coming to my head, if nothing else comes, then this will be the last for the day. It's been such a good day. I, I just planned something in my head and it worked perfectly. Don't you think so? We did a lot today, didn't we? 
And after the class, this is what some students say. Ah, it's so fast. Really? No. You feel it so fast because you were sleeping in between. That's not you, whoever told me. I didn't tell that student that, but in my mind I said that. You felt fast because you were sleeping in between. You woke up and said, where are we? If you're listening, no, that doesn't happen. Okay. The last thing is this. Let me draw some diagrams and see whether you understand before I say a word. So that's the ground. This is again from ground to ground. And you're throwing objects all with the same speed. Over there. All at the same speed, but at different angles. Let's say 20 meters per second, but at different angles. We already know what happens if you throw it straight up. We talked about that. He's no more. Lay him to rest. Okay, gone. That's, you know that. Uh, if it's at 45 degrees, we know that will be maximum. Maximum delta x. We already said that. What about, let's say, somebody throws it at 70 degrees. 70 degrees would appear to be the same velocity, remember? 70 degrees. Okay? And then somebody else throws it at 20 degrees. So that's 70. And 20 would be somewhere here. Did you notice something? Yes. We have to prove that. No. Good, you got it. But we have to prove it still. Yeah, those are complementary angles. So I'm trying to say that for the same speed, whenever the angles are complementary, the delta x will be the same. That works for 0 and 90, if you understand. 90, x is 0. For angle 0, x is 0. See that? Works for any angle. Well, if, of course, if it's 45, there's no other angle because it's 45 plus 45. Now, prove that to me. That will be the end of the class. So that's the question. Prove to me that for any particular x, one particular x, you have two angles. And when you add those two angles, you would get 90. Prove it to me. See, otherwise we're not using the math. That's what I'm concerned about. You already have the math, right? And we have to use it. Otherwise, this would just become a college physics class, where we substitute into equations and smile at each other. No, it's not true. Even them, I'm pushing. <laughs> And as a result, one already dropped out. That's okay. I'm not saying dropping out is good. You don't, okay? University physics is different. But college physics, some just, the student who dropped out is so gracious, wrote to me, say, I never expected that he had to know math to study physics. <laughs> I wrote back and said, yes, you have to, and blah, 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 and said, wish you all the best. It's a good thing to say hi or bye. You see? <laughs> I when you first come in and buy, when you go. Don't no, just walk out. You might need me some other day. People don't remember that. You just walk out. <laughs> Dropped out. Where is that person? I, remember, I still have your picture with me. I'll put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Onto the playlist, all who dropped out. <laughs> okay, how do you prove this? I'm just playing. How do you prove this? Did I give you a formula for, we have eight minutes. What's, what's the formula that I gave you for delta x? Oh, I think we have to finish at 10. Yeah, I know. What was the formula then? V naught squared sine 2 theta. Okay. So I'm going to say, let's say there are two angles. Does that make sense? I assume that there are two angles, theta 1 and theta 2 with the same initial velocity, of course, g is the same. And so the next thing that I'll do is what people are so happy about when cancellations happen. They're like, ooh, that's it. <laughs> so sine 2 theta 1 is equal to sine 2 theta 2. That does nothing. Where do we go from there? Where do we go from there? Now, for that, you have to remember that sine of 180 minus any angle, let me just use x, is equal to sine x. Did you know that? Okay. Yeah. So if you put 20 here, if you take the value of sine 180 minus 20, which is sine 160, and sine 20, they'll both be equal. Sine 160 and sine 20 will be equal, okay? Yes. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to write one of these in that form. 
So sine two theta one, I'm just going to leave that there. And this one I'm going to write as sine 180 minus two theta two. That works, doesn't it? Because just now I told you, sine 180 minus an angle is just the sine. For now, that's easy. Cancel. Sine's gone, so two theta one plus two theta two is 180, which means theta one plus theta two is nine. Yep.